just a bit of background first uh, in terms of um, who we are. Uh, Barking Dagenham is an East London borough. Um, it's a unitary authority. So we deliver a wide range of services to just under 200,000 um, residents. Um, to do that, we're currently employing 3,500 staff, more, more or less. Um, and although we're a very small geographical area, we still manage to occupy around 60 sites um, within Barking and Dagenham. Uh, many of our staff do work in the community, so they do rely on um, mobile devices. And uh, the biggest bit of context, really, is that in spite of all of the cuts which we've had to implement over the last couple of years, going forward, we have to save another 40% uh, in the three years from 2015-16. So there's an enormous um, challenge uh, ahead um, coming after the, the challenges we've already had to um, deal with. Um, we do have a vision. Um, we have, have an ICT strategy, which, is, which was approved um, last year. Um, fundamentally, we, we believe that the future is in the browser. Um, we want to get to a point where the browser is used to access all of our line of business applications. Um, and because the browser is ubiquitous, it works on a, the, the full range of um, devices. Um, we believe that uh, that's certainly the direction we should be headed. Um, to do that, we know we've got to embrace cloud delivery models, um, web-delivered applications from the cloud, as opposed to the uh, legacy um, applications which we're currently uh, using. And we know we've got to do ICT differently, and we've got to pay for it differently, too. Um, we've worked out that probably over the next five years, we need to halve the cost of our ICT service. Um, we need to move to a position where we're paying for our ICT as we do other utilities. Um, we need something which is um, very rapidly scalable, something which is, um, has some elasticity to it. Um, and when fundamental changes are made within the businesses, we need to see that immediately reflected in the cost of our support services. That's not really where we are at the moment, but certainly we recognize that's where we need to go. Um, so the detail of our existing ICT estate, um, 3,500 desktops. That roughly matches the number of employees that I mentioned. However, in addition to that, we have at least 800 laptops um, and a variety of other devices that have been creeping into the organization, the iPad being among them. Um, so, but the, with the exception of those, um, uh, the desktops and laptops are all running Windows XP. And uh, we know that uh, Windows XP is end of life. And although the government has very helpfully negotiated a way of paying Microsoft for another year on death row, um, we took the decision last year that um, this is something we, we really did, needed to move away from. Um, I talked about our line of business systems. We have in excess of 200 systems supporting the full range of services um, that we deliver to the residents and the community. That's a lot. Um, many of them are some way from being uh, delivered in, some way from being able to be delivered in, uh, via the web. Um, I think there's a lot of inertia in the uh, field of local government uh, applications um, where the suppliers don't necessarily have a lot to gain by helping us to do things not only more efficiently but cheaper. We have invested over the past few years, however, in a large Citrix estate, um, delivering remote desktop and published applications. Um, that has enabled our workforce to, remote, to work more uh, effectively, um, flexibili fle more flexibly. Um, it's encouraged uh, home working. So our starting point was that we already had a lot of Citrix. And I think that's, that's an important part of the context. So what, do we, what were we going to do? Well, obviously, we looked at the options available to us. Um, we could have just upgraded to Windows 7. Um, we bought out of our Microsoft um, Enterprise Agreement a couple of years ago, but that left us with a lot of Windows 7 perpetual licenses. However, that's it. If we wanted to move at some point to Windows 8, that would require significant reinvestment in, in Microsoft licensing. Um, that was really, that's the default position in a sense, because that's what we've been doing all along. We've, we've been locked into this refresh cycle. You know, every four years, you just buy the whole lot all over again, and that will last you another four years, then you buy it all over again, and so on. Um, 
So that, that was, in effect, the default. We looked at the Chromebook, um, and then in combination with using Citrix to deliver a published desktop. Um, that was certainly not um, the default position. Um, uh, we've been piloting um, the Chromebook for some time now, um, but clearly this is doing something quite differently to the way we've done it before. We also looked at more traditional thin client approaches. Um, we could repurpose the existing desktops um, and uh, um, buy new thin client terminals, um, and again, use virtual desktop and published desktop uh, to go with that. Um, we selected the Chromebook option. Um, there are three main reasons for that. It, it's security, and it's mobility, and it's cost. Um, we, we moved from a position where 3,500 people are rooted to the desk, if we haven't been lucky enough to get one of the 800 laptops. And now, every one of those people can take their desktop with them. So uh, it, it, at a stroke, we've enabled um, a workforce to become flexible and, and um, mobile. The cost was a, an important consideration. Um, my colleague will explain how some of the rather uh, startling figures that have been reported in the technical press this week have come about. Um, but of course, to go with the Chromebook, um, we were going to go for uh, developing and extending our existing uh, Citrix infrastructure to provide a, a published desktop. This will enable us to carry on using all of those legacy line of business systems. Um, but more importantly, it will enable us over time to have less reliance on Citrix and more um, applications being delivered and accessed through the native browser um, on the Chrome OS devices. Um, it does enable us, um, this particular combination of um, uh, factors does enable us to reuse our existing Windows licensing without having to invest any further in, in Microsoft licenses. So I'm going to hand over to Rupert. I'll come back at the end for a, a final thought, and uh, he'll take us through the detail, and you need this. Thank you. I just realized it's not the most exciting topic, this actually, is it? At the end of the day, it is uh, replacing desktops. Um, so where we're at, and we're, uh, we began the rollout, we sort of signed off and committed and started the project um, in a mad, uh, slightly manic period at the end of December, um, and selected the Samsung 303 Chromebook, which is the one that's priced around the 200 pound mark. Um, had quite a lot of fun trying to buy 2,000 Chromebooks. It was actually quite a challenge, particularly in the run-up to Christmas. Um, the model is that we're um, reusing the existing um, keyboard, uh, mouse, and screen on the on staff's desktop. So some of the issues around smaller screen sizes shouldn't be too much of a problem because uh, staff will be able to plug into the, those existing uh, screens and, and have a, a full-size keyboard. Uh, however, of course, when they want to be mobile, they can just um, pick them up and, and move on. Um, we, in, in order to support that, we've um, made a significant investment in increasing our Wi-Fi coverage to make it more ubiquitous across um, the entire council estate. So um, any building of a significant size, we're seeking to ensure that there is uh, a good Wi-Fi coverage in there. We're also looking at um, a set of Chrome boxes for those spaces where there's a bit more um, change in, in, uh, in the type of people coming in, so things like meeting rooms, um, reception desks, that kind of area, some of the perhaps a bit more public facing areas as well, so we can um, attach them to the desk. Um, we also have recognized that we, have, we are going to uh, end up with a significant number of uh, Windows PCs still out there. We have um, uh, a number of applications that we either can't get into Citrix or it wouldn't make economic sense to try and do that. So being a smallish London borough, we've got, we're delivering a wide range of services, including issuing parking fines and traffic offences. Um, and some of those teams are quite small, so some of those applications uh, would take quite a lot of effort in order to just get a handful of people over. So those kinds of places, uh, things like quite transactional focused activities where staff have got two screens, things like that. Uh, we've, we've stuck with, uh, with PCs. And then we've uh, also um, have various other specialist peripherals, 
special scanners, dedicated special printers and things like that. Um, and accessibility is another area that we've identified. So staff with uh, disability requirements, things like screen readers, um, um, screen magnifiers, those kinds of things, all of which are a bit of a challenge on the Chromebook. Uh, so we have stuck to the Windows PC model for that. Um, as we touched on, access to applications is, is through Citrix. As at the, uh, where are we? Quite early in the rollout, we've got about 300, 350 Chromebooks rolled out so far. The, uh, to start off with, we're basically sending all the users through the Citrix estate. We're using a Citrix published desktop. We're not using virtual desktop. And at least part of the reason for that, frankly, is Microsoft licensing. To have gone to a true virtual desktop implementation, we'd have needed to invest in software assurance for all the devices, and that would have um, added a very large sum to the total cost of the project. Um, however, we're definitely aiming to move our users, as Shane touched on, to making use of the direct browser route uh, into applications um, once we've sort of got the Chromebooks rolled out there. So we do already have some line of business systems that do support browser access. Um, day one, we're not touching that, but we'll come back to that quite swiftly. And we're also quite committed to looking at um, in, in the very short term, um, or soon, the, uh, the future of our email and sort of office applications kind of uh, estate and do a proper evaluation, look at, uh, look at the different options, uh, Google Apps, Microsoft Office 365 and those kinds of things and how they would work in a direct browser kind of model without the Citrix in there. Uh, security and frankly, one of the, the key stumbling blocks being in local government, we all had the joy of the PSN zero tolerance regime uh, last year. And um, the appearance of the CESG guidance on uh, end user devices, which was the October uh, last year, I think it was, was what gave us the confidence that um, we could go down this route, um, securing the knowledge that we weren't gonna do something that was gonna give us problems with PSN compliance. So uh, CSG ticked a number of boxes. Uh, in fact, some of these things, um, they, they evaluated an earlier version of Chrome OS. There have been enhancements since then. So things like the auto initiation of a VPN wasn't something that could be done in the um, earlier version of Chrome OS. It's now there. Um, there are other boxes that, uh, that CSG liked and gave us some confidence about the security of the device. I'm no longer particularly worried about one of these things being stolen from a data protection perspective because I'm very confident about the fact that anything that is on there, and there won't be much particular when they're using Citrix, uh, is all going to be fully encrypted and ticks the right kinds of boxes. We have chosen actually to m implement the Chromebooks um, using the same access method when staff are in the office as when they were working from home. So this is the full wall garden model from CESG and back-to-back -back firewalls, um, VPNs and all this kind of thing. And it was a deliberate choice in order to ensure that staff had a consistent experience when they're working from home or working uh, in the office. It shouldn't look any different to them to pick up the device and start working with it um, when they take it home or when they're in the office. Um, benefits, and this is where some of these numbers come from. Um, a lot of our existing Windows PCs were quite mature. Um, four years certainly wasn't the investment life cycle we've managed to get out of them, actually. I mean, at the end of the day, with some a lot of Dell kit there that's been around forever, and it's quite impressive the way it just chugs along. But we were um, confident that we'd have needed to spend a fair amount of money in order to get those desktops up to a state which could run Windows 7. So we were faced with having to make a sort of investment in the end user device regardless. Um, however, the modeling we did, and that was looking at a sort of more like for like replacement um, of desktops rather than Chromebooks, we still reckoned we would be saving about 200,000 pounds on the kit. Uh, if you've changed that round and said, actually, if we were rolling out the equivalent of 2,000 odd laptops versus Chromebooks, that number would be even bigger. But it's one of those slightly abstract theoretical numbers rather than a real one. Uh, a real one that we are expecting, um, and we did a bit of a back of the envelope calculation and were quite surprised at the number and so handed it over to someone who looked after our energy account but is the gap in just the electricity costs. This is actually, I guess, the same argument that's always been around thin client versus um, full PCs. Our existing desktops run at something like 240 watts. Uh, the Chromebooks run at something like 40 watts, and you multiply that up across the estate across the year, add in your carbon reduction, climate change levies, and your cost of electricity, and you come up with quite a big number, which is all quite interesting. Uh, but the, I think the main 
key benefit that we see over all that sort of slightly dull mechanical stuff is the flexible working part. We are going to be in a position where our staff, 2,000 of our staff, have a much more flexible device that they're going to be able to pick up and move around. And that's going to give the council a whole new set of opportunities and um, possibilities around rationalizing our buildings, encouraging greater working from home and more flexible and flexibility in the workspace. And that's another area where we see an opportunity to, to see significant savings in the future. I think that's me. Yes, and uh, I'm very conscious of the big flashing uh, red <laughs> zero, zero, zero time left uh, in the corner. I just wanted to, to say that um, I know Rupert mentioned this is a bit of a dull topic, not particularly exciting, but actually, um, considering that there isn't a lot to be excited about in local government at the moment, we are genuinely very excited about this. Um, we believe we've um, used something like the demise of XP to look afresh at the way we do things, and we've used this as an opportunity to do something very different. And uh, so that, actually, we think is actually quite exciting.